What's good, y'all? It's Bull Ross back at it again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 12 WWE rematches that were better than the original classic. Now, this should be a good one. Seeing wrestlers have, you know, a pretty good feud and the matches that they have prior to being better than their original first encounter, it's always a good thing. That means the, the feud has even gotten better over time. The people are invested in what's going on and, you know, just the wrestlers are able to, you know, hone in on a, a better match that the audience can enjoy even more than their first outing. So we're going to check this out. Should be a good one. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into this video, man. 12 WWE rematches that were actually better than the original. Let's see if Number we one, agree. Iron Man match for the Undisputed Championship, Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle. Classic. Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar had an underrated feud. The most memorable thing about their WrestleMania 19 encounter is Lesnar's bot Whoa. shooting star press. But even with that blunder, it was still an excellent main event. Their SummerSlam yeah. bout is often ignored as well, even though it's another strong match between the two wrestlers. Now, the smartest thing WWE did was turn Lesnar heel. His babyface turn was rushed, and though fans weren't hesitant to cheer the former WWE champion, they felt like WWE cut the legs of Lesnar's heel run for no good reason. However, what makes this match incredible was that Lesnar wasn't playing the unstoppable heel that ran roughshed in his 2002 run. Mm. Lesnar's story with Kurt Angle was laid out perfectly throughout this 60-minute match. The future WWE Hall of Famer couldn't particularly out-wrestle the Olympic gold medalist, but he did outsmart the Hall of Famer. It's not an easy feat to book a 60-minute Ironman match, yeah. but Kurt and Brock made it look easy. The first 30 minutes were perfect, Lesnar dominated that portion, and the bout never slowed down. The last 30 minutes had some head-scratching moments like Kurt not opting to take the count out to tie the match or his lack of urgency in the first few seconds, but it didn't hinder it in an incredible match. This is one of the best SmackDown main events mm -hmm. in company history. Number 2, TLC2. Hey bro, they, they work wonders together, I ain't gonna lie to you. Didn't matter who was a heel or a face, they just worked really well with each other in the ring. Two. How do you top a match that was already a classic? Uh -huh. Both tables, spears, and rhino, baby. Yep. TLC 2 is equivalent to John Wick 2. It's bigger, grand. I can, I can agree. I can agree. TLC 2 <laughs> at WrestleMania 17, chef's kiss. <laughs> and filled with more memorable stunts. The match was an unforgettable action-packed thriller from bell to bell. And of course, we all have that awesome spear off the top of the ladder etched into our brains. But there Forever. are so many fun spots in this match that it's too many to list. Yeah. For the most part, it wasn't about the story. This was about spectacle, and there's nothing wrong with watching a car crash live. It's been over 20 years since this legendary match, and ladder matches in general have become crazier and bolder in terms of spots. However, the classic TLC matches help pave the way for these types of matches yes, today. They did. TLC 2 was a roadmap to expertly craft a chaotic Ooh. match of this nature without being overly complicated or simply relying on spots. This trilogy of matches also gave a spotlight to the tag team division, though it helps that you had three charismatic duos fighting for these prestigious belts. Mm -hmm. The trilogy of TLC matches was just more than about putting on a stunt show. It highlighted the greatness of tag team wrestling and set a benchmark for TLC matches that have yet to be surpassed. Number Max. three, the WWE Women's Championship match of Alita versus Trish Stratus, Unforgiven 2006. Ooh. Alita and Trish's first match was an Indian strap match where the former seven-time women's champion was squashed. It's amazing to look back at their careers and see how much they've grown as performers. Their final match was perfect. Both women were extremely experienced performers who had strong characters at this time. Lita was the dastardly heel you'd love to hate. Mm -hmm. Trish was the valiant babyface looking to settle the score once and for all. Lita and Trish will always go down as one, one of the best rivalries in the women's division. Their main event match on Raw was a defining step for women's wrestling. Yeah. Their final match added to the legacy of their respective careers. This was an excellent wrestling match with an unexpectedly strong finish. And what's crazy is this is still in that era where, you know, women's wrestling wasn't really taken that seriously. So the fact that people actually cared and wanted to see these ladies go out there. And these are ladies that were obviously in other storylines where they weren't put in the, the best situations. We all know with the uh, Trish and the Vince McMahon angle and you know, Lita and, you know, the <laughs> the live sex celebration and stuff like that. They weren't presented as these credible wrestlers, but when they were given a chance to, they actually performed and delivered. And I can agree their match at Unforgiven was definitely uh, a highlight for sure. 
and the landscape of women's wrestling has changed so much since 2006, and Trish and Lita are just some of the pioneers who helped revolutionize the business. For sure. Number 4, Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. Yep. A Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20 should have been the ultimate clash of the titans. Nope. Instead, the bout was laid out to make Lesnar and Goldberg look bad on their way out. Over 20 years later, these two shocked the world by putting on a fun banger that ended surprisingly. The reason for the second and third Goldberg and Brock Lesnar matches works so well because it focuses on the strength of both men. Mm -hmm. As we know, Goldberg is known for his explosive and short matches. His brief run in 2003 isn't fondly remembered because he just wasn't a great wrestler. Goldberg isn't a guy that you put in long matches, no. so Vince was smart to keep his bouts against Lesnar short, sweet, and to the point. But Goldberg vs Lesnar at WrestleMania 33 stood out because it represented a different style from every other match on the card. Plus it was genuinely a fun match that focused on big move after big move until the final 1-2-3 was counted. Yeah. A huge redemption match for two men who were treated like shit on their way out. Yeah. Number 5, Sean I think we can all agree, yes, that was that was way better than their first uh, go, go around at WrestleMania many years ago. We can all agree. Short, sweet straight to the point that's all we wanted to see goldberg can't be out there for more than fucking 10 minutes in and out in and out that sounds kind of wild when you say it like that pause <laughs> Paul michaels versus the undertaker wrestlemania 25 well, the first ever hell in a cell match remains a classic Sometimes it gets lost in the craziness of Mankind vs Taker, yeah. but Shawn Michaels vs Taker was a perfect example of how to get over a new gimmick. Mm -hmm. Based on their very first encounter, it wasn't shocking that these two could pull out a classic, but it was always going to be hard for them to outperform such a legendary match. And yet, Taker and Michaels did it with ease. No one thought that Michaels was going to be the man ending Taker's- Hey man, watching this match live, having it be in Houston, had even more specialness to it it will i still need to show dub this match i don't think he's ever seen this match this is one of my favorite wrestlemania matches of all time they stole the show nothing else mattered after this this what they stole the show i'm getting goosebumps just talking about it yes honestly i have to put it this is their best match they've ever had some may disagree with me here, but their WrestleMania 25 match was the best match these two guys, in my opinion, ever had. Their 26 match, WrestleMania 26 match the following year was really good, too. If 25 didn't happen, if their match didn't happen there, 26 would have been their best match they've ever had. This was so good. Streak, but this guy is dubbed Mr. WrestleMania. So the former WWE champion found a way to make you believe that he could pull it off. Both Taker and Michaels are masters of storytelling, and this classic match began a string of remarkable matches in the years following WrestleMania 25. Yeah. Michaels and Taker at WrestleMania 26 had more emotion based on the streak versus career stipulation, but the layout of the WrestleMania 25 bout was a bit stronger than the rematch, an unforgettable classic that celebrates the sport of professional wrestling. Facts. Number 6, the Hell in a Cell match between Triple H and The Undertaker would show Michaels a special guest referee. Triple H and The Undertaker can be hit and miss. Oh, man. What else to say? <laughs> Legendary match. <laughs> Legendary match. Not gonna lie to you. Undertaker, around this period, he was the main event of the show. He was having some fantastic matches. Woo! Another great one. While all three of their WrestleMania matches are gems, some of their bout sites at the big event are kind of boring. Add the Hell in a Cell stipulation in the PG era, and there were so many ways that this could have turned out to be terrible. But this Triple H great. and Taker went on to have the best Hell in a Cell match of the PG era. Facts. The story going in was incredible. This was about more than ending the streak. It was about defining which man was the best of an era that's fondly remembered. And in Shawn Michaels, whose allegiance to Triple H was questioned since his DX buddy called him weak, and this match is simply perfect. Again, most people didn't buy that Triple H would end the streak once and for all. However, the drama within the match changed that perception uh -huh. really quick. The surprise sweet chin music from Shawn Michaels leading into a pedigree led to one of the best near falls ever done in W. Yeah, literally one of the best near falls. I'm, once again, I'm getting goosebumps. It's literally, you can say it's probably the best near fall in WrestleMania history, in wrestling history. Because I legit, for the first time, Literally for like the the first time. I mean, in 25, I felt like he possibly could do it. Sean could do it. In 26, kind of figured he wasn't going to. 
But this one, I thought it was over. I thought for the first time in ever, really, the streak was over. I thought it was over right there. The sweet chin music into the pedigree combo. I was like, they did it. It's over. Like, they, they literally are about to end the streak. In 2.99999 seconds, and he kicked out, bro. I... I lost, I'm like I said, I'm getting goo, I'm getting chills, right? I, I got goosebumps because I watched this live. I couldn't believe what was happening. And Shawn Michaels selling it in the corner. He's just, he doesn't know what to do. He's having a damn near break, a mental break. Like, what, what can we do? How is he still in this? It, just perfect, bro. Just fucking perfect. WWE. This is a case where the story fully carried the match, but the work rate of these two was still at a very top level. A tremendous match that should have been the true send-off to the Triple H Undertaker feud. Number 7, John Cena vs Shawn Michaels on Raw April 23rd, 2007. Yep. Yep. Here's a controversial take. John Cena is a great wrestler. I'm sure we can see him calling spots in the ring sometimes, and sure his character was incredibly stale during the Super Cena days, but there are too many classics with Mr. Hustle loyalty and respect to just ignore how good he really is. And we stated this in the Brock Kurt match, it's not easy to wrestle for an hour. However, that shit was good, bro. It's crazy how that match, their, re their WrestleMania rematch, was better than their actual match at WrestleMania 23. That match was chef's kiss great however the difference in that bout was the 15 second breaks that competitors received in this match it was simply one fall so there were no breaks whatsoever that made cena's performance more impressive this wasn't about titles this was about pride the yeah. first portion of the match saw the former wwe champion out wrestle the heartbreak kid and actually helped to explain why the match was so and uk crowd was electric for this match man slow paced in the early goings but nobody out wrestles mr wrestlemania and the belt kicked into third gear once michaels Ooh. escaped the stfu this deviated from the usual john yep. cena formula and allowed bah. both men to shine from a technical aspect One. then again a broom can have a classic match with Shawn michaels so these two having a very entertaining <laughs> 60 minute match Ooh, isn't too surprising so good, so good number eight the extreme rules match of john cena versus brock lesnar extreme rules 2012 Hmm. When fans think about John Cena vs Brock Lesnar, everyone instantly goes back to their SummerSlam 2013 For shocker. Sure. The match was great, but we have never seen Cena in such a vulnerable and weak position. However, it pales in comparison to Brock's first match back in WWE, so does their first encounter at Backlash 2003. John Cena was still learning the ropes around uh, that time. It was an okay match. In comparisons to that, yes. Yes. That match was fun. I don't think John should have won there. I think a lot of people don't think John should have won there. Um, I think, you know, telling the story of John Cena dealing with the loss to The Rock and then Brock coming back and then him just going on this downward spiral to uh, a, a good heel turn. I think a lot of fans wanted that, but we didn't get that, so. But it was a bit clunky and awkward at times, highlighting the inexperience of Cena. The match at Extreme Rules 2012 was a culmination of how both men had changed. Brock Lesnar switching to an MMA base style had made his mm -hmm. matches feel different. They felt like a fight, and his Violent. return to the company was easily the best part of 2012. It was an extremely physical and surprisingly violent match. Given that this was a PG era, seeing this level of blood made it a true gem. Mm -hmm. and the only problem with this match was the odd decision to put Cena over. Like Luckily, it didn't kill Brock's aura, but it was still a stupid mistake that took some momentum out of Brock's huge return. Number 9, CM Punk vs The Undertaker, WrestleMania 33. Vince McMahon loves the Montreal. And what's crazy, uh, Punk did a, a, a podcast. Uh, he was on a recent podcast talking about that's one of his favorite matches. And it's it's underrated. People don't really talk about it. But that match between him and The Undertaker and the feud leading up at WrestleMania, she was really, really good. Well, screw job. The company has replicated that moment on several occasions, including Taker and Punk's submission match at Breaking Point 2009. This year was the summer of Punk. The straight edge style was off to a hot feud with Jeff Hardy and was coming oh. into his own as the top champion. However, WWE made the mistake of replaying the greatest hits onto The Undertaker, which uh -huh. made the feud feel disjointed and cold. Still, this was The Undertaker and CM Punk, so the two should have had a great match. 
what actually happened was that Punk was treated as a joke that easily mm -hmm. tapped out in less than 15 minutes. All the hard work the company did to build him up was killed at breaking point in 2009. Yep. CM Punk was a star in 2013 and it was the right time for these to fight one more time. Punk and Taker had the best match at WrestleMania 33. Again, no one bought into the idea that he was going to end the streak, but the purpose of Taker during this period was to watch him have excellent matches. Yeah. Punk kicking out of the tombstone was an incredible moment. Mm -hmm. Wrestlers rarely kick out of that finisher, so to see Punk do it had you guessing whether the streak would finally end. That was the brilliance of Taker's matches. He knew that audiences wouldn't believe that his streak was ending, so the matches were typically laid out to cause some doubts among the fans. The only flaw with this feud was using the ashes of Paul Bearer. It was a distasteful and unnecessary prop between two men who knew how to build a rivalry without such nonsense. Number 10. And here's the thing. I know some people had some type of, you know, issues with it, you know, to like, uh, they, they felt like they crossed the line. But I do feel like obviously both of these individuals, you know, they, they felt it, it, it was part of the story, you know what I'm saying, to try to give CM Punk that extra heel heat in that extra edge you know i'll leave that up to y'all me personally i didn't have a problem with it granted i don't know if the family did if the family of all hair a paul bear didn't you know really like that then i can understand them probably shouldn't have stayed away from it if the family didn't have an issue with it then you know kind of kind of go with that it just depends it really does how mainly the family that's the most important part how do they feel about their loved one being in a potential storyline which obviously both wrestlers respect it so it's that's a give and take situation there the rock versus stone cold steve austin wrestlemania 19. Now, people say that vince mcmahon is stone cold's greatest rival but that argument could be made for the rock instead austin faced off against three generations of the rock that being the nation of domination rock people's uh -huh. champion rock and hollywood rock and you saw the level of growth throughout each of their encounters it's a shame that this match wasn't billed as something bigger than it should have been. The finale between the two of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era went out with a bang. Yes, they Several did. Several fun callbacks from their previous matches made this feel even more special. This was technically an end of an era match. Yeah. Rock vs. Austin Part 1 was when these two were still rising in the company. Austin vs. Rock Part 2 was the peak of the latter and this full induction into the main event. Rock vs. Austin Part 3 saw the shocking heel turn of Stone Cold, which did hamper the match once Vince screwed over the Rock. Rock vs. Austin Part 4 was about defining what the Attitude Era was. Mm -hmm. These two were the benchmark for WWE's most celebrated period, and it was a sort of a goodbye match featuring the stars of yesteryear. An incredible match that often gets overshadowed. Number 11, Ladder Match Factuals. Granted, I still like Rock vs. Austin. Uh... WrestleMania 17, the ending is definitely confusing. I still don't think they should have did that ending. I don't think they should, they should have tried to turn him heel, but still, that, that's one of my favorite, favorite matches, bro. Match for the World Heavyweight Championship, Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels. But somehow people forget that Michaels and Jericho fought at WrestleMania 19. It tells you how stacked the card was when Jericho's yeah. best WrestleMania match is barely mentioned. These two didn't officially feud until 2008, and it's one of the best rivalries of this generation. It was a well-crafted story that brought redemption to Chris Jericho's lackluster run in 2007, and it only further added to the list of great rivalries throughout Shawn Michaels' legendary career. Facts. Michaels had a strong match at WrestleMania 19, but the No Mercy ladder match comes after months of compelling storytelling. Ooh, Jericho so good, was the ruthless bro. heel, Michaels was the babyface dead set on finishing off the former champion so once good. and for all. So the ladder good. match was more on a technical side with a couple of great ladder spots sprinkled in. In fact, the biggest spot was a backdrop into a oh. crossbody through an announce table. It just goes to show that you didn't need to do crazy stunts in order for this type of match to be great. The ending is one of the best ladder match finishes yeah. ever. Michaels was on the cusp of overcoming the odds and finally beating the evil Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. But the former Y2J won the game of tug of war, capping off a tremendous feud that will be remembered for years to come. Nah, and number two, their feud was so good, bro. Oh my God, their feud was so good, bro. We was, we was, we was eating back in the day, even though Vince was in control. There were some great, great, great feuds. Of Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens at Battleground 2016. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens is a rivalry that spans back to their black and gold days of NXT, mm -hmm. when the former Universal Champion turned his back on his best friend following his NXT title win. Some even say that this feud goes back to the early 2000s during their time in Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. well, legend has it that Sami Zayn was the man under the El Generico no, mask, but unfortunately <laughs> we'll never get the truth because El Generico strangely disappeared in 2013. <laughs> Nevertheless, the battles between former best friends usually brings out the best in both competitors, and this was no different here. 
Whether they're a tank team or bitter rivals, Zayn and Owens have excellent chemistry every time they step into the ring. Back. Zayn has a Daniel Bryan-like quality that makes him feel relatable and likable, and it always helps when Owens is such an easy heel to hate. The emotion of the two former best friends battling on stage was felt throughout Ooh. the match, and the climax of Zayn hitting the halluva kick, catching Owens as he was yep. falling, and connecting with a statement yep. halluva kick was brilliant. Yep. It was a shame that WWE didn't capitalize off Sami's momentum oh, after this didn't. hot feud, but the rivalry opened the eyes of fans who had no clue who the former NXT champion was when he arrived onto the main roster. But there you have it, folks. I do think we're getting that again. I just have a feeling the way Kevin Owens has been acting, I do think Sammy will be one of those individuals that tries to bring the bloodline together once again. I do think we're getting that again, bro. It only makes sense. Kevin Owens is crashing out right now on people, obviously because of the bloodline situation. And it would be so poetic if Sammy is one of those people to try to help the bloodline in this upcoming year's war games. And it sends Kevin Owens over the edge. This is the guy that he beat the Usos, the longest reigning tag team champions of all time. He beat them with they main event at WrestleMania together. And they beat the Usos. And you're helping. Ah, oh, Chef's kiss. I don't have the script. I just think that would be a pretty cool idea. Hopefully we get to that point. But hey man, comment down below. Let me know. If you can, if you guys can think of like other feuds and matches where you felt like their their last match was better than their previous match, if it wasn't listed in this video. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150k. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See you on the next one. Peace.